What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a Tuesday edition of BYP Back Your Play. I'm your host, Rich Kuhn, as always, at Rich Kuhn. Appreciate everyone keeping us locked in. My guy joining us again, Jovan Alford, content producer to Sporting News. Give him a follow on Twitter. Does an outstanding job. He's all ready to go. He's got his game face on. I see a little <laughs> Phil, a little Sixers in the backdrop. Thank God I don't see. Do I see Eagles anywhere? I don't Not yet. Not yet. Anywhere, Jovan. I'm dealing with friggin' allergies. I lost my voice on the air Saturday night on the fights in Philadelphia. Then I'm drinking a little hot toddy on Sunday afternoon, trying to get fired up, trying to get into this, trying to pull off the upset for my gang, uh, my big blue back there and gang. And all of a sudden, boom, my Giants absolutely got their asses kicked on Sunday. I was depressed. I felt lethargic. If I had leaves in my backyard, I would have raked them. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I mean, raking leaves is very, very therapeutic. So I get it. I get it. You got to get <laughs> through it. And and I tried and I tried to talk you through the game. We were talking earlier in the game. I was trying to be like, Rich, it's going to be all right. They're going to do something. I don't need to be placated. I need tough love. Call it the way to listen. They weren't winning that game, but can you give me effort? Can yes. you show up? I mean, the fourth down play, Julian Love, blow up the freaking wide receiver. You don't need to make the pick. Blow up the play. It's basically a fourth down incomplete change of possession. They they were very unprepared. Mm-hmm. Uh, the coach has zero confidence. I believe the play caller uh, has zero confidence in the play calling right now. Zero confidence in the offensive line, the quarterback, the running backs banged up. And listen, the Eagles are... And I have no problem saying this. They're the best team right now in the NFL. They are far and away the most complete, the most balanced on both sides of the football. They've got a quarterback playing at a high level. They got a defense that gets at it. They have an offensive line that creates holes. They've got star players. They've got role players that contribute. And look, this team is a juggernaut. I just, I was not expecting them to, you know, just take it out on my giants like that to a tune of what 48 friggin' points yeah it, it, it wasn't it wasn't a good day for the giants and i think you kind of saw the tone being set on that first offensive drive for the giants and the way that the eagles defensive line was able to just to get pressure and to finish the game with what seven sacks 10 tackles for loss 12 quarterback hits that's a that's a Honestly, you know, we can get on the quarterback, obviously, because the quarterback's job to try to escape those things. But there's also an indictment on the offensive line, too. Great. You know, you can't have your quarterbacks, whether it be Tyrod Taylor or Daniel Jones, just back there, just getting, you know, just getting abused. And once you saw the Eagles defensive line set that tone it kind of, and with their with North on their first offensive drive for the Giants, it kind of just snowballed, you know, from there. They're just they're too good. And the Giants had that wonderful start, six and one, seven and two. Mm-hmm. But you realize the Adoree Jackson injury was huge. The McKinney injury, both avoidable when you think about it. One during a bye and one returning a punt uh, because Reggie James couldn't. They were huge. Uh, and I still can't judge the quarterback. But, you know, you're a Philly guy. I want to take it from a Philly angle. Uh, I've got my therapy out for the day, and I'm okay with that now. This team – this is a friggin' scary team, man. And I thought the only team that maybe has a shot to beat them come playoff time, that was going to be the 49ers. Mm-hmm. Now, there's no Jimmy Garoppolo. You also, the 49ers lose Debo Samuel. Uh, the kid Purdy is a nice story. Defensively, I thought if they had all their pieces in place, a healthy Niners team, let's say, they can go on the road and beat the Eagles. And right now, I'm just not seeing it. Like I tweeted this out the other day in a very weak, soft NFC. They just have the makings of that hot knife going through butter. Like it's set up. And I want to ask you this, you know, you're in tune, you're in touch with it. Um, If this team does not make the Super Bowl, how disappointing of a season is it? Uh, I think. I think it'll be kind of disappointing just because of the, like you said, the level they've played at this entire season and just, you know, with them only losing one game yeah. and it was only, and it was a game and it was a game that they lost. that was easily winnable. Yes. So I think it would kind of be disappointing, but then at the, at the, at the other end of the spectrum, I would think it will also, it's also, it'd be like, well, you know, this team wasn't expected to be this good, this quick, this, this fast. So it'll kind of be like, well, they lost, they didn't get to the Super Bowl, but 
look at the core that they have, right? The most of the core is still intact. But like we know in the NFL, right? You got to strike while the iron's hot because you just never know how injuries will impact the team. I mean, look at the Rams, for example, right? A team that went to the Super Bowl, won the Super Bowl, and were com- have been completely decimated, Disaster. you know, by injuries. So you have to take the opportunity while it's there because, again, you also don't know when you're going to get back there because the teams I, sprout up every year. I can tell you this. When you've got a team kind of run a rough shot like the Eagles have been, uh, look, I remember when the Giants won in 2007, 2008, they were dominating. They got waxed on Monday night against Cleveland. Then they won, I think, eight in a row. They were 11 and one. Then you had the Plaxico issue. And then they finished 12 and four that year. And they got bounced by, oh, by the way, the Eagles, who backdoored in the playoffs with a tie that year because they beat Minnesota in the wild card game, went up to the then Meadowlands and beat the Giants on a windy yep. day. I was devastated, right? It was like two kicks in the nuts for me, to be quite honest with you, because that giant team on paper, that team was built to win again right. i'm looking at this eagles team and again i'm not an eagles fan you know that um but man if i was a fan and and this team gets bounced in a divisional playoffs or they lose in the nfc championship at home i i think it's a major i would even go farther say a, a potential choke job and disappointed now that's on the premise they get home field because right. we don't know what's going to happen with dallas right still i mean look they got Chicago, Dallas, the Saints, and the Giants. Mm-hmm. So selfish reasons have it all wrapped up by the time you play the Giants for selfish reasons because maybe it's a gimme for the Giants, but I can't worry about that, right? <laughs> it always goes back to that. But if somehow they stub their toe against Chicago, mm-hmm. that sits them at 12-2, and two, and the Dallas Cowboys right now, if you look at the Cowboys, they're 9-3, and three, correct? Yeah, I think they are. I think they're yeah, not. Let me three. just pull up. I'm sorry. The Cowboys uh, right now uh, in the standings, right? And they have, I think they have. Cowboys 10 and 3. 10, 10 and, and three. 3. Thank you. They have a Jacksonville squad coming up, if 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 I'm correct, uh, yep. this weekend as well. So if they, let's say they get through them, that, that pushes them to 11 and 3. That makes that Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, uh, that game against the Eagles all the more important so Uh again we're not premature celebration here but still i just both sides of the ball man the way hurts is playing i mean you tell me did you see this maturation process the growth of jalen hurts did you think it was going to hit this quick quietly i did i didn't outwardly say it but quietly i did i just because based off of just the maturation we saw from him at alabama to then going into oklahoma and seeing you know a lot of people will say well he played an oklahoma style offense big 12 they played no defense how much can we take stock into it but you look at what he did that year in oklahoma it was incredible right he became you know, a better passer, right? Because Alabama, he really wasn't. He becomes a more confident passer under Lincoln Riley. He, you know, becomes a more dangerous dual threat. What I think he had, what, 50 total touchdowns yeah. that year or something like that? Don't if And got him to, what, the college football playoff? And the only reason why I didn't win the Heisman because, yeah, there was this guy named Joe Burrow, you know, lighting up the world in uh in college football. So I think Quietly, I did. It was just being able to see, you know, how they were going to build around him. You know, was he going to have consistent coaching too? I think that's the big. I think that's been the hugest thing, right? He's having. He's had, and a lot of people hammer at this point. He's had consistent coaching for the first time in a while, and I think you're starting to see that maturation. And he's he's playing good football. He's playing very smart football, cerebral football. He doesn't turn over the ball often, and when he does, you're like. All right, I get it. <laughs> I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to get your wide receiver to make a play. But I think he's taken a leap that I think that I think a lot of people didn't uh, didn't see because he's got a second round. You think he's a project quarterback at best. Maybe we'll see how he plays in like a couple of few years from now. But he's kind of accelerated his growth. And part of that has to go to the coaching staff and you know Howie Roseman getting the pieces around him, right? Getting a guy like AJ Brown. You know, we've seen it, you know, for a lot of these young quarterbacks, you get you get those guys that wide receiver, it takes oh, yeah. their game to a whole another level. We even seen that with Tua, right? Outside yep. of the last two games, Tyreek Hill with Jalen Waddle just takes your game to another level. Yeah, AJ Brown, monster numbers, already a thousand yards, Ted touchdowns, Smith, five uh touchdowns, Goddard, who's been banged up three, 
Watkins three, you know, Boston Scott makes a career. If anyone uh, decided, hey, let me win some money, I think 16 games going in, he had eight or nine career touchdowns. I mean, this guy is how Dave Megan was years ago against the Eagles. This guy's a giant killer. They, you know, Miles Sanders, I think, is an extremely underrated uh-huh. running back. I really do. He's averaging about five and a half a carry. That offensive line is opening things up. Um, you know, in the defense, they they fixed what ailed them from a yes. couple weeks ago. I, I went back and I had this conversation the other day with someone. I was like, how the hell in the world <clears throat> did Washington uh, beat this team? And, you know, they just were able to dominate the line of scrimmage that night. And the Eagles, to their credit, uh, they made some adjustments. I mean, I'm looking at the NFC right now. And again, you tell me if I'm wrong or not. Minnesota, who I picked to go to the Super Bowl against the Chargers, by the way, they're, they're a fraud. Like, yeah, a lot of people are saying that. <laughs> you are not the first person to say this. This has been and, a common and, theme right and I'm now. A, I'm a Captain Kirk guy. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a Cousins guy, believe it or not. But I I just – Cook, Jeff, great – they got great players, man. And, and people were, like, mocking the fact that the Lions – that line flipped and the Lions were favored. Well – what happens? The Lions. There's a the, reason. Exactly. And they, they win the game. Um, and they win the game outright, too, by uh, 11. I can't see Minnesota going on the road in Philadelphia. I can't. Uh, I can't see whoever wins the South. I mean, Tampa mm-hmm. Bay would get ambushed. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm trying to think of a team. Maybe it is the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys, you know, Seattle might be on the outside looking in. Uh, San Francisco would be my best bet. But again, I'm going on the premise that if they had a 100% healthy roster on both sides of the football, I mean, uh-huh. the Purdy story is nice, but can you just imagine, you know, they San Fran would have to keep it a very low scoring game and try to win it with their defense. I mean, do you believe right now the path goes through Philadelphia in the NFC? It definitely does. And like you said, Minnesota, their issue is, right, they can score, but they can't stop nobody. Yeah, They, they have one of the worst pass defenses in the league. They're giving up like 350, 353 passing yards yeah. per game in the last three games. Like, it's just been horrific. So you can't trust that, right? Dallas, again, Dallas seems like the team. They get T.Y. Hilton. Don't know how, that, how much of a big of an upgrade that's going to be. But can you trust Mike McCarthy? And Dak Prescott in the play in the playoffs, right? Can you trust them in that spot? San Fran, like you said, they are very formidable just because what they are able to do defensively is just amazing. You talk about one of the best scoring defenses in the league, mm-hmm. led by D'Amico Ryan's, who probably be a head coach soon. So it's tremendous. But health, that's the biggest thing with this team is health. You know? So now you know why I'm saying it would be a major disappointment yeah. if this team, if you really take a step back, if they don't. Uh, make it to the Super Bowl. Look, you still got a ton of football left. I, I get it. But right now, uh, you know, and you got some teams that are being a little sneaky right now. I mean, the Lions are a sneaky team. Carolina had a really nice win against <laughs> Seattle. One. I mean, go Very figure, right? I mean, uh, your guess is as good as mine with that. And then how about last night? I, You know, I feel bad for Murray. And I think I've said this to you in the past. I've said it um, with other guests. I believe this kid within one to two years is probably going to be playing baseball. Um, but it's just unfortunate. Like that's a albatross of a contract. And now the kid tears up his knee. I mean, it's just. It's, yeah. It, it's just steps like that injury there last night was just a microcosm of just how this season has gone. Yes. You know, for them, just, it just, it hasn't been a great experience no. and, you know, Murray hasn't been great. He started to play better as of late, but this whole entire season hasn't been his best. And then the head coach is not the greatest of head coaches, you know, either, even though he wasn't a great college head coach, but that's neither here. That's neither here or there, but you just hate, you just hate that. You just hate to see, especially a knee injury for someone like him that does use his legs, you know, to make plays. So you're wondering, and again, this is almost like when, you know, Odell, right. Got hurt late in the super in the Super Bowl in February, you're not Murray got hurt in December. He's n- probably not coming that's back point. next that's season a, at this point. point. Yeah, that's a great point. And you don't know how he's going to recover off of that. Um, yeah, it's just, I tell you, these guys going on with non-contact injuries and just, you know, then the concussions last night with the, oh, yeah. the 
with, with, with Devontae Parker. And, and by the way, that's a great presence of mind, Nelson Aguilar, to realize how he was lined up so awkward mm-hmm. uh, to grab his teammate like that. So credit uh, to him. Um, and then in the AFC, before we hit the NBA, Buffalo, Baltimore, Tennessee got humbled once again, freaking Jacksonville. And then Kansas City. <laughs> like to me, I just think with Lamar Jackson banged up with Tennessee looking old, Miami starting to come back down to earth. And you probably look at the futures odds with the M- uh, MVP with Tua now has dropped, right? This is what happens. You drop, you get value. And then all of a sudden the guy goes on a two to three, Very, you know, right. rock. that's what you want. You know, I said this years ago when Kansas city was five and four, take him at plus three fifty to win the AFC uh, West. Yes. And of course they go on this run and they do. Um, I, Buffalo. I still believe even though the loss of Miller, that is the most balanced team. Um, in the AFC, I, I just Kansas City, as great as Mahomes is, and you can argue should be the MVP because they don't look like the juggernaut, even though when you watch them, you almost get the sense that they are, but it's not the same Chiefs teams that we've seen in years past. No. That's why I think it could be Buffalo's year. Yeah, no, Buffalo definitely. If Josh Allen doesn't make those critical red zone mistakes, <laughs> They're they're a very formidable team that, you know, can win despite not having a consistent run game, right? Like, they're still good that their run game doesn't have to be on point. And like you said, not having Von Miller, you know, hurts, but, you know, getting back a guy like Tredavious White in that secondary, you know, helps them a ton, you know. And if they have to play Kansas City again, they could potentially beat them because KC's defense, it's not that that special that we've, you know, seen in years past. But I would say – also, keep an eye out on the, on the Bengals. This team is That's starting true. to peak at yes. the at the right time, and Great for point. them, it's Great just going to be: can you can you not have you know crazy injuries to derail everything? Because you got yeah. Jamar Chase back now. T Higgins is dealing, you know, with an injury. You had a defensive lineman, I think, break his wrist. So they're playing good football at the right time, and they should, I think, with all certainty, they probably will win that North Division just because the Ravens are just. Playing well, just made it with injuries with yeah. both quarterbacks. Yeah, it's a great point on Cincinnati. Uh, nine and four right now. Burrow over thirty six hundred yards, uh, twenty seven touchdowns, nine picks. He's been sacked thirty five times, by the way. But still, major problems. Still. In, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What else is new, right? Um, that's a good call on that. All right, let's uh move while we have a couple moments. Again, Jovan Alford joining me for a couple moments as he does during the week. Rich Canunis here Tuesday edition of BYP. Uh, the NBA. So kind of a uh, light night, so to speak, 76ers laying four and a half. I saw it bumped up to five and a half against the Kings. Uh, some interesting numbers for the Kings, 15-7-1 ATS, 12-2 ATS. Uh, uh, they're past 14 on games after they have a rest. But I look at this, and again, jump in any time, man. The 76ers just kind of ride in the back of Embiid, right? You're starting to see... When he's fully healthy, he's engaged. He gets his minutes. He gets his shots. We see how productive he is, uh, you know, scoring 50-plus here and there. can put up 35. You get Harden into the mix. I do like the Sixers in this spot. Yeah, I like the Sixers too, right, especially because with the Kings, you don't know if De'Aaron Fox is going to play. And yep. he's been a huge part of their, you know, reason why they've been successful, you know, this season between him and Sabonis and Kevin Herter and Malik Monk and Keegan Murray. You know, not having him kind of directing that offense is a little shaky. So I got to agree with you. I think, you know, you got to ride with the Sixers here. And like you said, Embiid's playing out of his mind, you know, scoring 53 you know, on the NFL, you know, Sunday is like nobody even really paid attention. They score 53 and you look no. in the box where you're like, hold no. up. He had 53. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what kind of bet you would have got if the Eagles scored 45 or more and Embiid scores 50. Um, that would have been crazy. Yeah, that would have been a nice little hit. Yeah, and, and right now the Kings minus 110. That's kind of the lean with this road trip. Um, Golden State against Milwaukee. Golden State is just not the same dominant Golden State, right? They're 14 and 13, mm-hmm. but they're 2 and 11 on the road. You got the Bucks, 19 and 7. Yeah, they've stubbed their toe here and there, but they're not going to have stretches where they're going to lose three, four, five in a row. They're 12 and 3 at home. We know what their backcourt's all about. We know about Giannis. Um, I like them laying four. The total's 233. I might throw a couple units on the over with the total, but I do like Milwaukee at home. Yeah, Milwaukee at home seems like the best play here, too, just because, like you said, Golden State, they just they haven't 
they've they started to click a little bit, but they haven't like you know fully been the team that they did. Now, obviously, them getting that big that went over Boston a couple of nights ago over the weekend was a very, yeah. I think, a huge lift for them, just showing that they can still compete at that high level. The issue is for uh for Golden State coming in this game against you know Milwaukee is you know can their bench compete with you know compete with Milwaukee because they can just roll out guys and they're just you know Javon Carter you know Bobby Portis they're just coming out scoring so if you're getting if you're getting that many points with the Bucks like you said there sometimes you even gotta look at it against the spread numbers when a team is dominant at home and one team's not dominant on the road you gotta you gotta roll that one side so definitely like the Bucks here too and the other thing is too you, you talked about Bobby Portis averaging about two and a half offensive boards you look at Milwaukee they're eighth in the NBA with about 12 on the glass off so second chance points right I mean that that's what they do and it's just amazing me for everyone talking about Golden State and Thompson and Curry and everyone. They're so bad on the road. Like, mm-hmm. I, I mean, 2-11, and 11, you're, this is a defending. And that's usually not them. No, defending NBA champ. 2-11. and 11. It's the equivalent of what the Rams are basically doing this year, right? You win the Super Bowl last year and inconsistency injuries. You can't win at home. You can't win on the road. I mean, I think the worst home team is probably – uh, the Cardinals in the NFL. I saw their numbers over the last 14. I think they're two and 12. That's just embarrassing. Um, Incredible. I like this game for a couple of reasons. Suns and the Rockets. So right now Rockets are plus 190 on the money line. The Suns come in 16 and 11. They're laying six and a half. Booker's out. So I don't know if this mm-hmm. is a spot where you probably jump on the Rockets getting seven. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's tough because they don't win games in a row. They don't consecutively win games in a row a lot, but right. they compete. And the Suns, I think, with the loss of Booker, that's a major loss. Maybe this is the game where the Suns, a little tired, a little lethargic, no Booker. Maybe this is kind of the let's just get through this trip and then get back to, uh, you know, get, get, get back to, I think they come back home and I'll pull it up. But I'm actually leaning towards the Rockets getting the points at home i mean it's not a bad play right because like you said no devin booker and people forget devin booker is just not a scorer for him he kind of does a little bit of everything for him right he's dishing out assists he's cleaning up the glass he's kind of that do it all player but still somehow leading them and scoring at the same time so not having him's you know a huge loss and if you look you know at the at the at the rockets they've had a couple of good you know wins in their last five they beat Milwaukee by five they took down the Sixers in double overtime they you know lost to Golden State by nine and they just beat this Suns team earlier this month by one point and And Jalen Green had 30 in that game yeah so this so both of these teams you know uh, I think this is a game where if you're just if you're the Rockets you're trying to you're trying to push this pace you're trying to get up and down so I would even look at the at the total here in this spot because last two times these teams played you know we're talking about they scored uh 233 and 240 and 243. So yeah. if you're if you're Houston, you're not winning this game in the 90s and the 80s. No. You're pushing, you're pushing this to the hundreds and the hundred and tens. Yeah, feast or famine. And then the lastly, the Celtics 21 and 7 against the Lakers, who are 11 and 15. Again, the Lakers showing a little bit of life, but the problem is in their last 10, they're one and nine against the spread. Uh, Celtics right now, they are laying four. I saw it go as high as five, come back down to four and a half. It'll most likely sit by tip off. I don't know what the other books might have in front of you, but I'm looking at four right now as we mm-hmm. speak. I, I just think the Celtics are just Brown Tatum smart. They're, they're, they're locked into where will they have an off night? Yes. Uh, have we've seen it? Yes. Yep. Right. I mean, we, we, we've seen a game or two, if you're a Boston Celtics fan where, you know, the Chicago loss, Miami loss, you know, they, they had the two losses back to back against golden state and the Lakers trying to close it out. You want to chalk it up to maybe being kind of a tire team. That was a tough, that road trip, Brooklyn, Toronto, Phoenix, golden state, the Clippers, the Lakers, I get it. Uh, but I just, I don't see them dropping a third, to be quite honest. And then they come into their schedule where they have some winnable games, two against Orlando and then Indiana. So I'm looking at them. All right. We know where the Bucs are. We know at the end of the day, it might be one and two. Let's kind of stockpile some of these wins. But right. I just think they're a deeper and a better team than the Lakers. I have no problem uh, laying that number. 
Yeah, definitely. I think this is where you, because even though, like you said, there's no Horford, there's no Robert Williams still, that they're okay with that, right? Because AD, they'll let AD get his points. But like you said, that bench plays so huge. And that's something, like you said, the Lakers don't have, right? The Lakers don't have a Malcolm Brogdon off the bench. They don't even have like a Grant Williams give them the points so I'm I'm with you here I would take this I would take the Celtics here just because you even look at the Lakers this season they're six and 12 as an underdog this year so that's not the side you want to you know want to no. hedge on here so I, I I take I take the I take the Celtics right they lose a game in the Clippers they don't have to travel they're still staying in LA so take the take the Celtics here to get the job done and try to get that bad taste out of last night's loss against yeah, a I, 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 good I, I, team when they're healthy yeah yeah, absolutely. He is, of course, uh, Jovan Alfred at Jovan, 10 content producer, Sporting News, Total Sports Live, right? Correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, before I let you get out of here, do you have a player prop or two in the association tonight? Do you have anything you might fire at Will? I know you're the prop guy. <laughs> so I, I thought maybe you might have had something. I got to, you know, kind of catch off guard a little bit. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We'll, we'll, we'll do this live right here. All right. Yeah, we'll do ahead. this live. Go ahead. Take your time. I'll just remind everyone uh, we're powered by spookyexpress.com. Jovan's kind enough to join us for a couple minutes. I'm buying time right now. You're going through your notes. You're scurrying through. Finding you know something. what? Uh oh, we're going with a rebound. Go ahead. What do we got? No, no, no. We're, we're not going to go. We're not going to go with a rebound. We're not. We're not going to go with a rebound. I'm, we're, we're going. We're going. We're going to go with a guy that you brought up before. Uh, just a few minutes ago, I think we're going. We're going to go Jalen Green. Jalen Green. We're going to go Jalen Green. No Devin Booker in this matchup. His prop number is at twenty-one and a half. He's gone over this number three times. Yeah. Out of the last, you know, five games, coincidentally, they've come against all you know good teams. Thirty against Milwaukee, twenty-seven against the Sixers, thirty against Phoenix. I mean, he's not a he's not a he's not a three he's not a good three point shooter, but he'll find a way to get a basket. So you know what? Let's take Jalen Green, you know, over 21 and a half points because if they're gonna if if we like them to, if you like them to cover and we like this over, right? He's gonna have to play a major role in his spot. So let's go Jalen Green over 21 and a half. And if you want to get spicy, you can take the 25, you can take Jalen Green 25 plus points for plus 180. So you are backing your play on this. Yes. 100%. That's all I want to know. I, <laughs> that's, and I'm sure when you hit it, I will get the tweet alert. I will get the text. And I hope you do. That's not a bad play. Green. And as you said, get a little spicy with Dow. All right, my friend. Always appreciate a couple moments. Um, real quick. I know we talked a little bit about this last week. Got about 30 seconds. Uh, the Total Sports Live can can. People go and, and and see what you're doing on the site. Are you doing just a uh, regular uh, blog or content? You know, give the listening audience a little uh, plug on that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, totalsportslive.com. We obviously do have the podcast, Total Sports Live podcast, TSL podcast that we do every week. Right now, we're still in fancy season. So we're talking now next, I think this week's show, we're looking at the playoffs and matchups, start sit Guys, you should pick up there. But then, like you said, on the website, there's a whole bunch of stuff, a litany of stuff, you know, Eagles, uh, Phillies after the week, you know, last after the last week that they've had, yeah. you know, in the hot stove. Um, NFL draft stuff, we're going to be a lot of draft stuff coming out uh, with player interviews, um, uh, NFL draft notebook, you know, we got rankings and all that good stuff. And yeah, it's just a whole litany of stuff. Philly sports, if you want it right there and fantasy football we still probably gonna have some waiver wire reports if you're still alive in your fantasy league and you need some late season pickups we'll have that there as well for people all right awesome keep up the great work my friend always appreciate, appreciate you making it. time for us here on back your play for a couple moments again don't forget follow jovan on twitter at jovan 10 content producer sporting news and of course total sports live appreciate you pal um all right so there we had it. Uh, we had Jovan for a couple of minutes and uh, I, I guess he had a Jovan probably had to go jump off because he probably had to go do uh, something uh, very important. So we appreciate him jumping on board. I know he's probably going to like blow on my phone and say, hey, I didn't mean to get off too early, but that's OK. Nonetheless, I know we're a little tight on time, but we appreciate him uh, jumping on board for a couple of moments. And as always, don't forget our picks, our NBA uh, picks on the hardwood from our good friends over at SpookyExpress.com. Check them out for all the promos. As we typically say, if you're going to say it, you play it. 
And that means if you back it, you're going to stack it. Thanks for joining us for a Tuesday edition of Back Your Play. I'm Rich Quinones. Later on, don't forget in the week, Lloyd Vance is going to join us. Also, Brandon Bell. We got the 27 Q podcast with Brandon Jacobs. Uh, we also have um, a couple other guests jumping on board, and we'll talk a little sweet science boxing. We'll handicap some of the fights. But as always, appreciate you guys jumping on a Tuesday edition of BYP. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Rich Q on Q. Have a good sports Tuesday. We'll talk to you Wednesday.